In today's video, I'm going to continue getting into shape. This time, it's going to be List, La Campanella. You know probably the piece, it's very famous, and it has been a dream of mine to play this piece. Of course, there are so many pieces to be played, and I never got to play this one. I played many other pieces by List, but not this one. And now, since I started regularly practicing and recording for you, I thought it would be a great piece to practice for myself, as well as share with you my progress with it. Let's begin. I'm starting with the first section, which which is till bar 21. Again, I will upload the score for you, the exact same score I'm using with bar numbers on the sheet music so you can follow very easily. Just open the score and you'll know what bar 21 is. That's a first small section. I'm not going through the piece. Make sure that you always have a very good plan, practice plan. With the beautiful music we're playing, it's very easy and very tempting to just go through a lot of music, but in this way you will never accomplish anything. And if you want to have good results and your technique to constantly improve you need to have very clear schedule very clear plan of action with your practicing now I'll start studying the piece and basically I'm showing you exactly what I do in my practice in the videos we have you can see part of my the actual practice I do I'm going to start once very slowly so I can see the right notes and everything that's going on until bar 21 And now you will notice that I'm adjusting my speed. I'm not going to keep one and the same speed. When you don't know a piece, you will notice, observe that while I'm practicing, that I'm constantly slowing down or easing off a little bit if it feels a little easier. It's very important when you don't know a piece that you are very flexible so you can play the right notes and learn the piece very well. Do you notice also something else? Do you notice that I'm not only slowing down, but specifically I'm taking enough time to break the chords in my left hand? If you look at the first page, you will see that from bar 6 we have broken chords. And I'm not trying to be on time. I'm not trying to do this. Uh, I will play from bar 5 and you can see in bar 6 if I try to be on time, what happens? I have to break the chord much faster. I don't want to do that yet because I'm not at the stage that that's required for me. That's why I'm taking you through the process and you'll see with every video that I'm doing different things depending on how well I know the piece. With this piece, I really need to take it easy and observe everything very carefully. I always tell my students that it all depends on the stage of progress you are with the piece you are playing. So let's take it from bar number 9 and I continue further. I'm slowing down to play the broken chord. Now we have a reverse jump. It's getting a little bit more difficult here. So take your time. You see that I'm slowing down as much as necessary. Now here you can see that I actually marked it in the score in bar 17. I marked the upper note of the, of the interval of the left hand. I marked it with a sign which means that I'm taking the upper note with my right hand because the chord is very big and I don't want to break it. I want to play on time, everything together. 
in that bar, bar 17. And so I marked this. That's why in the very beginning, you want to take the piece very slow. That's another proof of that. That's another confirmation that if you are playing too fast, you will miss on many details. And then later on, your piece will suffer. So let's take it from bar 16. Here I took time to see the note that I have to play. That's funny. And that will be a section, the next section that, that I'm going to practice for another video or for another time. I have to divide my attention. So what I'm seeing is that until bar 13, until this place, where we get the reverse jumps, it's a little bit easier until bar 13. The piece, for me, I know it a little bit better because it's a little bit simpler and then it becomes more complicated. So what I have to do is pay a little bit more attention in the section from bar 13. So I'm going to go once more in from bar 13 and I'm going to try to push the speed tiny bit. I feel that I can read the piece to the extent well enough to be able to try to push tiny bit the speed further. You have to be very careful to learn to know that Sometimes if you play too soon, too fast, you can actually damage your progress. So watch out very carefully with that. That was going to be bar 13. Can you guess why I stopped? I stopped because I missed the melodic line. Do you notice that from, if you follow from bar 16, we have a melodic line. And in bar 17, I heard that. I didn't hear actually the melody. That's what we want. We want to follow the melody. That's, that's one of the difficult things about this piece. It has enormous jumps, but at the same time, it has a melody throughout the whole piece. That's what you need to follow. So if you look from bar 16, this time I'll try to emphasize the melody and you'll hear the end of the melody on the first note of bar 17. Now I could hear it. That, that bar, number 19, goes again not so good. That was a little bit better. Now I'm going to go through the whole section and see how, how it goes in a little bit faster tempo. As you saw, I played from bar 13 a little bit faster and now I'm going to try to do the whole section a little bit faster and I'm going to fix any mistake that comes on the way. I'm not going to play the first few bars because there is nothing for me right now to work on. Later on, when I'm more advanced with the piece, when I know it better, I'm going to work on musical things and then I'm going to play all kinds of places. I'm not going to discriminate some places. But right now, because it's a learning process, I have to choose what's the best to be practiced and that's why I choose to go with the more difficult section. So I start right there. <laughs> Thank you. 
Can you hear that I'm actually applying a little bit of pedal here? That's part of the learning process. I don't know right now if I'm actually going to use this type of pedal later on when I play the piece. But in order for me to find out, I need to experiment. But the only way to experiment with pedal and different interpretations is to do it very gently. And what I mean by very gently, depending on where you are, depending on how stable you feel. Right now, I felt a little bit more confident in the piece. I felt like, oh, not too much is going wrong. And so I felt that I had, I had space in my head to, to try and fool around a little bit with the pedal and see what sounds good. I'm not convinced that I like this sort of interpretation. I, I think maybe I would prefer more just a dry one. But that's going to be decided further later on. Right now, I'm just trying. I'll continue from bar 13 again. Bar 14. That was not precise again. That was not certain. As I'm noticing, I'm trying to, to push it a little bit further in the tempo. As you see that I was having quite fast tempo already. And I started playing wrong notes. And I wanted to tell you something interesting about this piece, what I personally feel that applies generally for all the pieces you play. Don't allow yourself to, to move, have wrong notes because the more you allow yourself, the more wrong notes you're going to play overall. But with this piece specifically, you have jumps. And if you allow yourself to hit the wrong notes, those jumps are going to be very difficult to conquer. So I'd recommend that you really control yourself so you can execute the jumps as precisely as you can. It's really important to play the right notes. I know that if I allow myself now and then to hit a wrong note, I'm going to start feeling very unstable and I'm going to encourage playing the wrong jumps. So I, I push it a little bit with the tempo. I'm, I'm trying to search for how far I can go. But if I see that the wrong notes are becoming too many, I'm going to calm down. I'll continue from bar nine. <laughs> That's going to be difficult. That would be a great exercise, by the way. I don't know if you felt what I did. I stopped, I slowed down before each big jump and that's in bar 14 before the first note and before this one and then in bar 15 before this one. 
let me demonstrate once more. I'll play from bar 13 and you can see where I'm slowing down. I'll also tell you. Here. Here. And here. So, in this way, don't worry, you are not ruin, ruining the piece, you are not making it worse, you are not going to play it like this, but from my experience what I learned is that it doesn't matter that you are taking time. Later on, when you play the piece faster, you are going to be able to play on time, but you are also going to play the right note. So it's a little secret that you can use in the very beginning or when you're practicing, just take the time to play the right note, the big jump to catch the right note and you are going to see after that that it's, this exercise is very rewarding. Let me demonstrate a little bit of the exercise so you can remember what to do. Bar 13. Basically, I'm ready for the next group. Again, bar 18, a little stop, then in the middle also. I want to go forward, but I'm not going to do that yet because, like I said in the very beginning, discipline. You need to have a clear plan. That was, that was my plan to practice the first section with you and see what's difficult and see what I need to improve. I started getting a little bit cocky and I'm going to pay the price for that. I'm not going to do it. Sometimes it's nice to fool around a little bit and see how far you can get, but always go back to your practice plan. Don't deviate too much, have fun, but remember that a good plan of action is going to get you great results. This is going to be all for my video for today with List. We're definitely going to come back to this piece and have more of it. But for now, I'm just going to show you a few of the different pieces I'm practicing and we'll get back to the ones we already talked about with different spots, of course. There is so much I want to share with you. And what would be wonderful is if you ask me questions and if you also have requests for pieces, if you have specific questions, if you want to send me videos, whatever questions you have, feel free to ask me because then I can make different kinds of videos for you. For me, recording this video was a great pleasure and I will see you in the next one.